Each spring, five million birds migrate through North America. Migrating in flocks, researchers are still trying to fully understand bird flocking behavior. Bo Sun, a physics assistant professor at Oregon State University, specializes in biophysics and how collective motion emerges from social interaction. In physical terms, I think bird flocking is simply saying you have a collective motion of many, many birds that appear to be coherent. And if you're looking at a single bird in a cohort, you find it's very different from an isolated bird. So uh, it's a collective emergent behavior of many, many birds interacting with each other. Before 1990s, I think people believe the bird can flock because they are leaders and also because they can see further away and they can see the whole flock basically. So they, can, they know where they should go, they should follow the group. But in the 1980s, there was a very smart person. His name is Craig Reynolds. He is a computer scientist, and he is majorly interested in how do you reproduce the flocking behavior from computer code. And what he ended up with is basically three principles. Number one, I'm going to have many, many individual objects. They try to avoid each other, actually try to avoid collision with each other. Number two, they try to align with the average velocity of their neighbors. And number three, every object will try to move towards the center of mass of the whole flock. So try to be in the cohort rather than dissociation from the group. In the flocking of birds, one bird has to have at least more than seven next nearest neighbors. So in total, I guess, that, that means you have to have at least 1,000 to 5,000 birds. If you see a, a, a group of geese flying in a bee, it's not that they don't all, they don't all share the pain, so to speak, of being the, the lead bird in the flock, but there's gonna be some subset of individuals that are moved back and forth. And in fact, you'll watch that, right? If you watch a, bee, watch a bee fly over, it's not uncommon to see three birds break out and kind of drift to the back of them, and there's a new bird in the lead. This bird being one foot over and two feet back, somehow it's, it's getting an aerodynamic benefit and we, we largely just assumed that to be true, but they've actually done some um, measurements now with birds, and they've shown, in fact, that they were able to measure the turbulence being generated by the wingtips of the leading bird and how that affected the air quality of the following bird and how the bird following, in fact, timed its flaps in a very specific way. And it only works if, if in fact, their, the flaps are timed in a certain kind of a pattern. They, they now know for a fact that they're getting a benefit of lift from positioning themselves in a very specific spot. It is an element of culture um, in that you don't see you don't see continuous strife amongst birds in a flock. You might you know, see little bits of it once in a while, a bit like road rage, right? But 99% of the time, people behave as we expect when they're driving their car around town. And bird flocks and birds in flocks are the same way. They have have fairly specific rules about how they engage other individuals around them and it's pretty it's much more inflexible than you might think other animal groups utilize the same swarm intelligence in unique ways the purpose of flocking in golden shiners is to seek darkness presumably for protection because their main defensive weapon is to run away when light disappears the fish slow down which result in the school piling up in dark pools When it comes to locusts, if you place some locusts in a box, they will move randomly in different directions. When you place more locusts in the box, they will begin to form in clusters. When you add more locusts, you will hit a point where all of them begin to start lining up and forming a sort of marching army. The reasoning behind this sort of behavior is cannibalism. The locusts are trying to avoid being eaten by each other with the urge to eat others while preventing being eaten by those behind them. Cancers move in a way of leadership just as swarms of wildebeest and humans do with leaders emerging spontaneously leading the entire group. Cancers consist of many different cells and when tumors invade tissues and move to different tissues, it could be that the tumors have trailblazing leader cells that sit at the front edge of these invasion waves. Though not proven, it is possible that these leader cells are doing the same thing, which is steering the rest of the group that is just trying to stay together. 
This idea could possibly be used to figure out a way to steer the invading movements away from important tissues or even stop growth overall. Applying flocking behaviors to autonomous cars, drones, and other technologies are also a work in progress. When it comes to drones, they can potentially coordinate flight patterns using signals from cell phone networks and GPS receivers, communicate their positions, and compute their own flight path. One of the properties of a flock is collision avoidance, and one of the most important things of self-driving cars will have to be the ability to not run into people or one another. All of these reasons behind collective behavior are simple for something that seems to be so complex.